Oh, yeah. John Starks oh, yeah. off the bounce, oh, yeah. the reverse jam. Oh, yeah. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean David. Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. I'm your host, Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk some old school NBA basketball. In today's episode, I want to talk about a player who, to me, defines perfectly the 1980s and 1990s NBA basketball. A player who fought his way into the NBA and finally became an NBA All-Star. I'm, of course, talking about John Starks. But before we get into that, let me give a quick shout out to the Patreons of this episode. Thanks a lot, you guys, for supporting the show. As always, it's really appreciated please do me one more favor guys please subscribe to the channel and click the notifications button so you always get notified once i upload a new video all right enough said let's dive right into today's episode So, where do we start? I would say let me take you guys back to the late 1980s and early 1990s to the beginning of the NBA career of John Starks. From 1987 to 1988, six foot five John Starks played college ball for Oklahoma State, where he went pretty much under the radar of most NBA scouts. This would be the reason why Starks went undrafted, and at this point, it looked like he would not make it to the NBA. But then, shortly before the season started, Starks signed a contract with the Golden State Warriors, who liked his intense style of play. However, unfortunately for John, his rookie season did not go as planned. Playing behind super rookie Mitch Richmond, who played a key role in Golden State's offense, Starks only received limited minutes and therefore could not show his great potential. At the end of the season, it got even worse when John injured himself and therefore would only play 36 games in his debut year. He would finish that season playing on a CBA team and lose his contract with the Golden State Warriors. The next one and a half years, Starks would continue to play in the CBA until finally, in 1990, he would get a shot to play for the New York Knicks. And of course, his first game would be against the Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan. Jordan. People say, was you scared? I said, no, because I had played Michael over in my mind so many times. I had played him one-on-one. -on -one. Starks comes in, and John Starks is a player they activated yesterday. He looked at me. He like, before the night is over, you're going to be calling me Mr. Jordan. Stops the dribble, plays it into Jordan. Starks steals the ball, falls out of bounds. Jackson on the drive ahead to Starks. He lays it up. Good. John Starks, first two points. I end up, you know, playing well that game, and after the game, I walked up to him. I said, he's going to get Mr. Jordan out of me tonight. My confidence level is shot up. In his first season with the New York Knicks, Starks would average 20 minutes per game and quickly became a fan favorite. Starks knew that he was not the most talented guy on his team, but he surely could be the hardest working guy. More and more his confidence grew, and slowly but surely, his teammates also started to look for him on offense. By the next, off the steal, Starks, oh! To be able to be a contributor to the team's success, it was a dream world in, in a sense. Then in 1992, John Stark's basketball career would change forever. And it had a lot to do with legendary head coach Pat Riley joining the Knicks. But unlike the fast-paced Showtime basketball Riley was known for in his Lakers days, he had a different personality in mind for the Knicks. Even though Starks would still come off the bench, he would now average 13 points per game and be a vital part of New York's offense. But what was even more important was that he would give the New York Knicks the necessary toughness on the wing position. And speaking of toughness, that New York Knicks team was brutal. The 90 team under Riley was physical. The Oak man, Ewing, Starks, was the guy out front. Here's John Starks. When Coach Riley came, he put a lot on my shoulders. We had the persona. 
team-wise of a nasty physical team, and that's exactly what John Starks was. It's a flagrant two. His headbutt of Reggie Miller in the playoffs was inopportune, but again, you can't separate the bad from the good with people. You have to accept it all. And the overall package of John Starks was uh, unquestionably positive. In the 1993 season, he would finally become a starter, would average 17 points per game, and he was now known to be one of the best shooting guards in the entire league. A great two-way player who would love to challenge to guard guys like Michael Jordan, Reggie Miller, Mitch Richmond, Clyde Drexler, and so on. However, his best performance would be in the 1993 playoffs in the Eastern Conference Finals in Game 1 against the Chicago Bulls, where he was simply on fire. Miller Genuine Draft presents Genuine Moments. Today's Miller moment takes us back to game one, last year's conference finals between the Knicks and the Bulls. John Starks, the big gun, he hit five three-pointers, scoring 25 points, igniting the Knicks to a 98-90 victory. The five three-point shots, a Knicks single-game playoff record. In recognition of this moment, Miller Genuine Grant will donate $1,000. After the 1993 season, John Starks was super motivated and determined to take his game to the next level, which he did. This would be John Starks' best season of his entire NBA career. He helped the Knicks to become a new powerhouse in the Eastern Conference and would be the second scoring option after Patrick Ewing. But even more important, when the game was on the line, Starks would be the guy who would take the last shot. All the hard work, all the tears, the sweat, the blood, everything seemed to pay off in that season, when Starks finally became an NBA All-Star. Starks for three, and a big tray it is for John Starks with nine. It was like a combination of all the work that I put into it and the dreams that I had. As the season continued, Starks' focus shifted to the playoffs. But just one month before the postseason was set to begin, he suffered a severe knee injury in Atlanta. When I tore my knee up in 94 against Atlanta, I can remember the doctors told me I can be back in six weeks. I said, I'm gonna be back before then. I was convinced that I was gonna be back for the playoff. A standing ovation, welcoming back John Starks. He always came back earlier than expected. So I wasn't surprised when he did make it back. It took him a little while to get back in the groove, and then he really had a very good playoff run. John Starks drives to the baseline, lets it go! John Starks is back! Clean up, Starks for three. Yes. They mirrored us in a lot of ways. Uh, they try to play defense, they try to be physical. John Starks and Reggie, it was a battle. Here's Starks, John Starks with the three. The Knicks would lose to the Rockets in the NBA Finals, and John Starks had a terrible Game 7, probably the worst game of his entire NBA career. Still, he would recover from that and be a vital part for the New York Knicks. In 1996, he would lose his starting spot to Allen Houston, but he would win the Sixth Man of the Year award. But gone were the days where Starks would be a legit NBA All-Star. From 1998, Starks would play for four different teams before he ended his career in 2002. He left us with many great memories and many great plays, and maybe one of the greatest plays in NBA history. There are 50 seconds left in the fourth quarter. I saw B.J. Armstrong every time I shift my eyes and he knew a pick was coming from Patrick. He would jump to my high side. John Starks breaks loose at the um, 7th Avenue end of the garden. <laughs> I like, you got to go in strong. And I just jumped as hard as I could. Starts. Yes. What a move by Starks who was able to sky. I've been in the garden a lot of times. I don't know if I've ever heard a louder roar than that night. That's one poster shot that I got as a famous shot. 
So how good was John Starks in my opinion? Well, I personally feel even though John Starks was only a one-time NBA All-Star and never was an NBA superstar, he was definitely one of the most entertaining and fascinating guys of his generation. A player that was all heart with a great outside shot, a player who would give you 100% was just exactly the type of player that I always used to love and still do. So John Starks, it was great to have you back in the days. Alright you guys, that was it for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed the content. Please leave a like and also subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine. Take care and goodbye.